I used to live in a 55 plus retirement building, pretty much the last place people go to live before they die. Although it's a 55 plus, the average age of the residents was over 70. To begin, I want to mention that I have had paranormal, or just plain not normal, experiences since I was a small child. I moved into the apartment building back in 2010 with my dog Precious. I moved out in 2016. I live in New England and these buildings used to be old mill buildings. Mine was from the 1800s and was a smaller building with about 28 apartments. There was a basement level with a laundry room and other apartments, the first floor, second floor, and third floor. I lived on the second floor so I was high up. I lived in an N unit which was nice. I had two adjoining neighbors, one shared a living room wall and one shared the perpendicular kitchen and bathroom wall. My living room wall that was shared with a very nice man was made of bricks, so there were no privacy concerns. The lady on the other side was just simply never home. That was very nice. The original lady downstairs below me was very elderly. Her adult sons would come over and check on her and take care of her. One day, I was using my blender, making a smoothie when there was a very loud bang on the floor. So hard that I could feel it right under my foot. It was like someone banged a broomstick very hard on the ceiling downstairs. I was taken aback. Was the blender making that much noise? The bang was directly under my feet. This became relevant later. One day, a few months after that, around 5.30 a.m., I hear a loud bang and a rumble that woke me up. I knew immediately that this elderly lady had fallen, so I called the police. It took them about 10 minutes to get into the apartment, and sure enough, she was on the floor next to her bed. Two days later, I ran into her sons in the hallway and learned that the lady had a stroke and died that day. I also found out that she had been restricted to a wheelchair and was very frail. I mentioned the smoothie incident and apologized for making so much noise, assuming that one of her sons was banging on the ceiling. They had no idea what I was talking about. It definitely wasn't the lady, so I don't know who was banging on the ceiling. The next lady who moved in downstairs also had a dog, so I saw her in passing outside and made small talk with her, which actually turned out to be us talking to each other's dogs instead of each other. She was nice enough. Then there was the upstairs neighbor. Sigh. The floors creaked in the apartment very much, so I had to get used to that. But for the first two years, it was always just your average occasional walking around. Completely easy to get used to and ignore. It took a long time for me to meet the lady upstairs, Mary. Maybe about six months after I moved in, I was standing outside by the front door with Precious, and Mary comes walking out of the door. Immediately, I knew it was her because I didn't recognize her as someone I had met already, as I had pretty much met everyone just from being out and about walking Precious. She was slightly hunched and was maybe 85 pounds soaking wet, thin. She had wiry curly hair and was very wrinkled. So I smiled and introduced myself and we chatted a little. I asked her how long she had been living there. 20 years, she said. I'm doing the math in my head as this is a 55 plus building. This was a little bit shocking to me, her being there that long living by herself, but hey, she's an old maid, so am I. So over the next few years everything was really nice, although I did notice that my dishes were going missing, but I just kind of explained it away as me being mistaken. I also started noticing that a few times for several weeks at a time, Every time I went to the bathroom, Mary was in the bathroom upstairs, walking around. Creak, 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 then flush. I totally thought this coincidence was hilarious. It would last for a few weeks, then stop for months. The end of 2013 was a very dark time, however. In November, during Thanksgiving, Precious got really sick and started coughing and couldn't breathe, and by the next week, December 4th, she passed away from heart and lung cancer that I had no clue she had. She was eight years old. She was a Bichon Frise and should have lived until at least 12 to 14. I was devastated. I spiraled down into the deepest depression one could ever get into. I just wanted to die and go with her. 
my mind was gone. I didn't cry. I wailed for hours. I pulled out my son's old teddy bears and hugged, slept with, and cried on them. My heart ached. My stomach hurt. The vibes in my apartment changed. My son would tell me that it just felt different in there. Weird. Uncomfortable. The energy I was giving off permeated the entire place. Despair, darkness, pain. During my crying fits while on my bed, I could hear the familiar creak, creak upstairs right above me. Then it would go quiet, then creak, then nothing. I felt so uneasy, wondering if this woman was listening to me cry. The separation between upstairs and downstairs was just the subfloor upstairs and a drop ceiling downstairs. No insulation, no cement, nothing. I could hear everything between floors. Around December 21st, I found my new little girl. Her name is Buffy. She was eight weeks old and very tiny. It was still very hard for me to get through the day and I still cried very much, but the needs of Buffy helped to keep me moving. In 2014, when Buffy was around three months old or so, I would leave her in the kitchen with gates up whenever I left the apartment. She would have access to the bathroom where her pee pad was. My bedroom was near the kitchen, so I made it a point to close the bedroom door every single time I left the apartment. This was as important to me as making sure the stove was off or the iron was off. I never forgot to close that door. She was still at the age where she got into things and my room just wasn't puppy-proof enough. At times I would come home and the bedroom door would be wide open. I'm talking all the way open to where the door was against the wall. Even if I accidentally left the door open, I never opened the door wide. and This gave me chills. At first, I convinced myself that I must have left it open, but I knew deep down that I didn't. But that was the only thing that made sense because no way someone would break in. There's no sign of a break in and it's not like I live in a high crime building. I mean, come on, just a bunch of quiet old people. Once I was taking a shower and of course I closed the bedroom door because I couldn't see Buffy. When I got out of the shower about 10 minutes later, the bedroom door was wide open again, all the way to the wall. I got a sinking feeling in my stomach. Things just kept escalating. I would be woken up in the middle of the night by various things. One night I was woken up by a man, loudly saying, Ahem. The sound was right outside my room around the corner in the living room. I'm frozen thinking, an intruder's in here. I'm wide awake, feeling around for my huge hunting knife that I keep next to my bed. Then I hear again, Ahem. I lay there waiting for him to come in my room. I don't know how long I wait there, but after a while I got enough guts to go check it out, knife in hand. I slowly walked around the corner to my living room. I keep a nightlight in my bathroom so the living room was slightly illuminated. I did a quick scan of the living room and saw nothing. Then I went closer to the sofa and looked behind it and there was nothing. Then I looked in the doorway. Nothing. There was just nothing. So I went back to bed. I thought about it for a while. Then creak, creak, creak from upstairs. I'm thinking, good lord, she's nosy. It's like 3 a.m., why is she up? And how does she know that I'm up? I was sneaking around my apartment, trying not to be noticed in case there was an intruder in there. Okay, I'm just thinking too much. Just another coincidence. She probably just went to the bathroom. Old lady bladder. In 2015, things really hit the fan. It was the worst year there ever. Me coming home to the door being open continued. The missing dishes continued. I had more incidences where I woke up at night. Once there was a growl that woke me up. It wasn't Buffy. She was still sleeping next to me. Then another time there was a loud banging on the front door. I looked through the peephole. Nothing. Then the banging on the floor started again. One night I was in the kitchen washing dishes and there was a familiar bang right under my foot. It happened again the next night right under my foot but this time I was cooking at the stove. How do they know where I'm standing? This is the lady downstairs of course, 
I didn't understand what I did. I was just standing there cooking. I wasn't making a lot of noise. I was so angry that I reported her to the office the next day. The office administrator informed me that the lady downstairs wasn't home for the past few days because she had a mild stroke and was in the hospital. Okay, so this lady had a stroke too? I would hate to live in that apartment, but I digress. I just didn't know what to make of that. I want to make a note here. Remember I said that between the floors there is just subfloor and drop ceiling. Well, how would someone bang on the ceiling if they have a drop ceiling? Well, okay. I guess they could go through the trouble of moving the ceiling tile, bang on the subfloor and uh, put the ceiling tile back. But I just can't see an old lady doing this. If she were home, and remember... The previous lady was restricted to a wheelchair. Then the knocking on the wall started. At first it was a faint knock on my bedroom wall which is on the other side of the living room. Obviously there was no one on the other side of the wall because the other side was my living room. I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. It was just a faint knock every five minutes or so. Over the course of the next few weeks, the knocks traveled all over the living room walls and got much louder and more frequent, lasting all day long, coupled with the creak, creak, creak of the walking from what I thought was the lady upstairs. Those footsteps would follow me all over my apartment, I kid you not. I was woken up by what sounded like a jar of pennies or marbles thrown on the linoleum floor upstairs, startled both Buffy and me wide awake in the middle of the night. One night, it sounded like someone dropped a big heavy object that I can only describe to be like a big lead safe on the floor right above my bedroom. I was awake for that one. Remember, this woman is 85 pounds soaking wet. I've had scratching noises in the wall of my bedroom like an animal was in the wall. One evening, I went into the bathroom and the familiar creaking followed me in there. And then everything went to chaos. Again, it was everything. Jar of pennies on the floor tub water on and off, sink water on and off, toilet flush, creak, 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 and I'm just standing there like, oh my god. Because I know that my upstairs neighbor was in the hospital for a back problem and there was no one home in her apartment. Buffy had her share of barking at nothingness. I managed to capture a video of her one day freaking out at something that I cannot see. I was crocheting, watching TV and relaxing and she was lying right next to me. She then heard a noise in the living room or saw something, I don't know. But she started barking as if she was waiting for it to come back and show itself and boy did it. After barking calmly at the doorway for a bit, she reacts as if something just walked right into view and at times her barking starts to escalate with growls as well and she backs up as if something is coming towards her. She even ducks a few times as if though she was trying to avoid being touched. You can see the video here.
There has been three people who have died in that building just in the last five and a half years that I have lived there. One guy who lived next door to the lady above me was wheelchair bound and fell into his tub. He was dead for several days until Meals on Wheels found him. I was living there for that one. The other death was on the first floor near the elevator way on the other side of the building. I do feel kind of bad about thinking this lady was doing her best to harass me and feel even worse mostly embarrassed and stupid, for being paranoid and thinking that she was following me around the house, throwing things on the floor and possibly breaking into my apartment, stealing dishes. I wanted so much to try to find a rational explanation. When I look back now, me believing she was following me around was totally preposterous. I think the death of my other dog and the darkness it brought set an already volatile environment ablaze with activity. I finally moved out, but here's the kicker. I now live across the street. I think I'm far enough away. At least, I hope so. Back when I was leaving elementary school and entering junior high, some friends, I was 10 to 11 years old, and I decided to make a Ouija board and try to summon some spirits. We did it at school and everything went smoothly. Honestly, it was rather fun than scary and we only made a few questions until we got bored and went home. Back at home, I wanted to do it myself. I spent almost 10 years in the Catholic school, so this was a taboo topic for me, and I started to talk to a spirit of an alleged kid that had passed away, very young. I have to admit that the experiences were quite exciting and at this point, some mild paranormal events began to happen. First, I'd listened to a child's voice calling out my name. I also sensed him touching me while I was sleeping and saw a few shadows that I thought belonged to this kid. I honestly wasn't afraid of this, so I just enjoyed the experience. Until I messed things up. One day, I was trying to summon the spirit of someone that had passed away at my house. It was a rental or nearby and somehow I reached the spirit of a woman that warned me to leave her alone. Being a stupid 11-year-old, I didn't listen, so I kept insisting until she, apparently upset, closed the session and told me I was going to suffer the consequences. And then it all began. First there were shadows, but not the ones I saw before. These were bigger, scarier, and appeared more often than before. Also, the whole energy felt heavier than before. Then more noises began to appear. I could hear someone scratching my pillow every night and... One time my bed even shook, slightly, but it did shake. The paranormal phenomenon increased slowly. Soon after that I actually began to see the woman. The time I remember the best is when I was passing in front of my sister's room and saw a woman undressing in front of the mirror. My first thought, stupidly because my sister was six years old was that it was her, so I jumped into her room to jokingly scare her. Well, the scared one was me because that room was completely empty. I experienced a lot of things in this time. The ones I remember the most are when I saw a woman walking in my mom's room when she was so tall she reached the ceiling. I never saw her face but only the back of her head and she had really long black hair. 
Also, one time I woke up and I saw a huge shadow right above me which slowly disappeared. Another time I woke up because I was hearing a child screaming in a very horrible way and I realized I had sleeping paralysis. I might write about this later in another post because I've had several experiences. I tried to fight it back and I began to hear a woman's laugh. This lasted a few minutes until I could move again. And the last one that really affected me was when I was home alone at night and I saw how my room's door started to move as if though someone was trying to enter. Also the knob was moving back and forth. This happened a lot and only stopped when my mom came back. It was quite frustrating because no one believed me and at first only happened to me but after a while the maids told me that they also saw the woman and they actually did it without having to tell them first and my mom had to admit something was going on when she saw the TV cord rise as if though someone was pulling it and then get disconnected. This eventually stopped. After a while I wasn't afraid anymore so I think maybe it found it boring and the less afraid I was the events became rarer and rarer until I moved to another city and then everything stopped for good. The moral of this fable is never ever try to summon spirits with a Ouija board or by any means at all. The main incident that occurred was also witnessed by my boyfriend. It happened in our child's room. For context, our four-year-old son's room is located directly across the hall from our room and we can see it from our bed. In my son's room, there are some jackets hanging up on some hooks on the back of his door. This is a detail that comes up later in the story. We've lived in this house for about three years and never had something like this happen before. So we're sitting in bed on our phones getting ready to go to sleep when we both hear our son jump out of bed and run across his room to the door. His door is like halfway shut so I can't see into the room, but as I looked up, I saw the door move like he bumped into it. My boyfriend jumps up to go put our son back to bed. After a minute or so, my boyfriend comes back out of the room looking kind of freaked out and whispers, He's fast asleep. He didn't get out of bed. I climbed out of bed thinking my son is just pretending to be asleep or something and walk in to see him definitely asleep, breathing slow under the covers how we tucked him in earlier. My boyfriend and I are both kind of like, what, to each other, wondering what just happened. We sort of just settle back into bed when something that makes this so much weirder happens maybe a half hour later. My son wakes up whimpering and we get up to go check on him. He's pointing at the door where the jackets are hanging and says, There's a monster playing with my jacket. I flip on the light and look around. I can't see anything. My first thought was maybe some sort of animal got into our house and that's what we heard and what he just saw. So I look around the room trying to see if there's a mouse or something. Our house is already small and clean so there's not many places for an animal to hide and I can't find anything. Plus, my son kept insisting the monster was still behind the door, playing with his jacket. Additionally, the footsteps we heard were pretty loud and really sounded like my son, so it just didn't make sense that there was a small animal. My son wouldn't go back to sleep alone so my boyfriend laid down with him so he would feel safe. This was such an odd event. My son never talked about monsters or being scared before this. It was so out of nowhere and so weird that we heard the footsteps as well. Ever since then, my son will sometimes wake up crying talking about a monster in his room. I wish I could find an explanation for what we heard. If we hadn't heard the footsteps, I would have probably dismissed my son's monster claims and not think much about them. Any ideas of what we could do or any rational explanation. To get this story started, I'll have to jump back in time. Around 2015-2016, I was getting ready to go out with my mother and grandmother to go to Hobby Lobby. And for those of you who don't know what Hobby Lobby is, 
It's a store that is full of art, craft items, candles, etc. It's like a Walmart for crafts and art. After I was done getting ready, I sat in my room playing with my parakeet because I had some time to spare. A bit of time had passed and my mother, whom I told to get me when she was ready to go, hadn't come to get me. I walked out into the living room and she was flabbergasted by my appearance. Not because of the way I was dressed, but because I had come out of my room. My mother claimed to have come into my room and said the lights were off. She had checked all around for me and assumed I went to my grandma's. She lives right behind my mom's house. I told her I was in my room the entire time and we felt strange after that. Now, before this entire incident, my mother was very liberal, as well as a few of my other family members. A bit of time passed and when I woke up one day, everything changed. My grandma, who was strictly against tattoos and dyed hair, began doing so. She got a tattoo and dyed her hair pink. I was highly confused and brushed it off as a change of heart. This was until my mother became this kind of hardcore conservative overnight. It was all weird. My other grandmother, who didn't like tattoos either, got one. Everything that I grew up with just suddenly changed. Little by little, I've been noticing more differences in my family from what I had grown up with. I kept trying to make excuses for it, but nothing was fitting right. I'm still stuck here in this universe that doesn't feel like my own. I've always been spiritual in the sense that spirits are attracted to me and I connect with my third eye often. I don't know what to do and I've read theories that once you hop, you can't go back to where you're from. And this isn't like a political issue, I'm not even mad that my mother is conservative or whatever, it's just totally different from the mom I grew up with. Things have gotten weird, some of my lifelong wishes have come true, but nothing feels right. Ever since I've realized all of this, my brain has gotten strange. I suffer from bouts of disassociation, which at first I thought could have been seizures, except my soul feels like it's floating above my body. Nothing feels like it belongs to me anymore. My body feels foreign, often. It feels as though my soul is trying to connect with a body that never belonged to it. I know I sound crazy, but I'm saying this with 100% honesty from my side. I was going to try to make a video, but I don't want to upset my family or scare them by making them think that I don't care about them. I try to make this new life work for me, but nothing is helping. Does anyone know what I can do to adjust? I have memories that nobody in my family remembers, and I tried going to the doctors who say I should get a brain scan and test, but I can't afford that right now. They say I'm coherent enough to pass the test, but don't know why I'm having these episodes of disassociation and minor brain seizures. I really, highly believe that this isn't my world. Those close to me can vouch for me and I can get screenshots of old texts I've sent stating what I'm stating here. If anyone has any sort of idea of what this is, please, I'm willing to hear it all. All I know is that doctors are puzzled, I'm puzzled and nobody besides my boyfriend and closest friends know about this. If you've read this, thank you. This is a small venting session about my situation and I hope someone might have some answers. So I've never believed in paranormal activity. My brother had never believed either. Then he moved into my dad's for a few years after college. One night, him and I were at a bar drinking and he looked at me and said, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm pretty sure dad's house is haunted. When he's out of town, I hear people walking around upstairs. I've woken up in bed hearing loud noises that get louder and louder like they're coming at me. I can't move until the noise stops. I pretty much laughed it off and chalked it up to night paralysis since I experience it myself and they are always accompanied by visual and audio hallucinations. Fast forward five or six years, my dad asked me to house sit since he's going to be gone for two weeks and it's going to be vacation for my roommates for me, so I accept. I stay in my brother's old room since it got converted to the guest room. First four or five days go by, nothing weird happens. Then it rained one night. I wake up and go upstairs 
the light by the landing for the door and the kitchen light to both on. I chalked it up to being drunk the night before and just not turning them off. That night I'm in the basement playing some games. I go upstairs to get a drink, come back down and notice the closet door was open that I didn't remember being opened. I attributed it to being cracked open and when I opened the front door to check the mail, it was pulled open from suction. So I shut it and make sure it was completely shut. Another couple days go by with nothing. Then I'm laying in bed, about to go to sleep when it sounds like someone was walking around above me. I figured it's just the house settling, but I keep hearing it and it isn't the house settling. It is very distinct noises, heading in a direction, stopping, and then heading back or in another direction. Every time I yelled up that I was calling the police, it would stop moving, then start back up. I had not called the cops because remembering what my brother had said and the fact that it would only temporarily stop when I yelled up. At this point I grabbed a baseball bat and head upstairs just in case. I turn on the lights, keep talking to this intruder. I searched every inch of the upstairs and the way it is set up there is no real way to go from room to room unnoticed, no hallways upstairs, just three rooms, two of which have wide openings to each other in a bathroom and bedroom in the corner. I searched for about an hour, then went back downstairs and shut off all the lights. About ten minutes later it started up again. This time it lasted about thirty minutes. I didn't get any sleep. A few more days with nothing, then one night I was in bed again and I hear this faint eight-bit sounding music. It starts slowly getting louder and louder. At this point, I'm in full panic mode because of what my brother has said. Unlike him, I have no paralysis, so I jump out of bed, grab my pillow and blanket, and go out to the couch in the living room. I didn't hear the sound once I left the room. I stayed up watching TV for a bit before falling asleep on the couch. It rained again that night, and when I woke up, the closet that was open before was wide open again, and the light above the front door landing was on again. I was sober that night and I know I hadn't opened the closet since there was no need for me to go into it and I know the light was off because it was on when you're watching TV in the basement, it kind of blinds you. After that I stayed on the couch, no more instances besides another night it rained and the lights being on again. When my dad came back I asked him if he's ever experienced anything weird in this house. He said he never had. I told him my story. Then he said he's always thought that there might be something because no matter what time of year there is always a fly or two in his house and never has any other bugs. A couple of weeks after he came back he called me after a rainstorm to say that the light above the landing was on when he woke up. Since then he said the only time it happens is when it rains or when my brother or I have been at the house that week. I'm still not 100% a believer by any means. That being said, I still get goosebumps every time I tell anyone about it, even as I type this out. I'm also a lot more open to believe weird things people tell me that seem unbelievable. Just for the record, my family has no record of mental disorders such as schizophrenia or anything on record. In the summer of 2017, I was 15 at the time. I had a very vivid dream of a place that I had never seen in my life. It was weirder than a normal dream. It's hard to explain, but the whole thing felt off. Sometimes dreams feel more like a reality, but this was different. About a week after the dream, I went on a missions trip to Texas. Throughout the week, I would get a sense of deja vu at different places I went. It was the strongest sense of deja vu I had ever gotten before, it's kind of hard to explain, but it was like deja vu that you could feel down to your core if that makes any sense. It would come and go throughout the week, but it didn't get crazy until we left Texas. When we got to the panhandle of Florida, we stayed in the gymnasium of a Baptist college for the night. We got there at about 11 or 12 at night, all of us were tired. The deja vu didn't kick in right away, but... I was in awe that I had seen this place before too. I kept it to myself because it was weird and I didn't want to get questioned about it. 
as I was taking a shower in the locker rooms of the gym. I had realized that I had showered there before with the same Sharpie tattoos on my arms. A girl drew Sharpie tattoos on my arms the prior night and I hadn't showered since then. After that, I brushed my teeth and went to go to sleep on the gym floor in my sleeping bag. The gym is two stories tall and had a balcony overlooking it. Upstairs, a light was on that couldn't be shut off for some reason. I had the urge to go upstairs. It wasn't something that was optional. I had to go up there. My soul was strongly set on going up there. I see my youth pastor walking to the water fountain in the corner of the gym and tell him that I had a strong urge to go upstairs. He was concerned and confused, obviously, but me, him, and one other adult went upstairs in the elevator. When we got there, I was walking through the exact dream that I had a week prior. I recalled everything that I had seen. After looking around for a few minutes, we decided to take the elevator back down. The other guy that was with us stepped in first, and as soon as he was in, the elevator doors immediately shut. That's not normal elevator behavior. My youth leader even tried to pull the doors before they shut, but had to let go before they crushed his hands. He took the stairs and met the other guy on the bottom floor. He went to bed, and I went to talk with my youth leader. I explained to him that I had insanely strong deja vu, and even as I was talking to him, I felt like I had had the conversation before in the same spot and everything. He didn't know what to do, so we just prayed and we both went to bed. This next part was the scariest thing to ever happen in my life. Remember the whole schizophrenic thing mentioned at this post? This is the point where I thought I had lost it. I started hearing whispers around me, indistinct as if they weren't speaking English. They would close in around me. When I looked towards the source of the noise, it would come from somewhere else. Then footsteps, coming from different places and disappearing when I looked at them. I heard a low hum as well. I cried and clutched a rock with a cross drawn on it that I had gotten from Texas. I eventually faded into sleep. I honestly don't know how. The next day I woke up and told no one about the voices and such. When I left I recognized the buildings of the college campus vividly, just like at the end of my dream two weeks prior. Since then I've had periodic dreams like this, no voices of anything like that. Usually when I get them, I'm doing something out of the ordinary. For example, going to a football or hockey game, nice restaurants, drinking or smoking, etc. Last week I had a premonition actualize almost every day. My theory on why I've had this happen, I'm connected to a spirit or some supernatural force. Over the summer I was screwing around listening to satanic hymns lying in bed with my eyes closed. I felt like I was floating and had goosebumps and chills. Scary stuff. It was also around the time I had the original premonition. I've had many premonitions, so I've lost count. I'm keeping them to myself, so this post isn't too long, but if people are interested, I'll do a follow-up post or answer any questions that people have. Let me know what you think could be the cause of this, and if you've had something similar happen, or if you have any questions... I really want to know if I'm alone or not with experiencing stuff like this. So I recently moved to Charlotte after the passing of my father in August in Charleston. I had also ended a relationship and just wanted to be on my own and living in a city. I moved to a nice apartment with a fireplace. The apartment felt good when... I tore it in and moved in. After the first few weeks, I began to have strange feelings. Leaving the shower, getting changed in, and waking for water or pee in the middle of the night gave me the feeling that I had guests in the main room. I remember waking up one night and believing someone was sleeping on my couch. Before I went out there, I made sure to put on a shirt and pants because I didn't want to freak out my guests by being in the buff. As time went on, I found myself more and more self-conscious about what doors I left open, like someone was there and I didn't want to give them a show. This continued and almost has become worse. I'll occasionally shower and I can hear the sounds of someone getting ready in the bathroom. It also feels like a female getting ready or in the other room. 
After that, the dreams came, almost weekly. I've had dreams discussing with this entity that they needed to go. Now I sleep through anything, so what I found weird was, after these dreams, I would spring awake and feel like someone was in the room with me or the entry to the room. It often reminded me of having to talk with a roommate who is hanging out in your doorway. After a few minutes, the feeling would subside like they left and I'd go back to bed. These dreams continued, oftentimes leading to shouting matches where I was demanding it left. About three weeks ago, things picked up a bit. Between the dreams and now, I've had a few more situations where I felt like someone was with me in the apartment and ended up buying a bathrobe. One night three weeks ago, she and I had a discussion in the dream. It was a positive dream, but she wouldn't tell me what she wanted. I snapped awake and felt like someone was close, like near the bed close. After a minute of contemplating my options, I spoke out loud that I was leaving. I heard a sigh in my ear like someone was next to my bed. I was terrified. I threw the bathrobe on and drove around for about an hour. I decided I wouldn't acknowledge her or it and just go on with my life. Two days later, I saw her. I was cleaning the house and doing laundry. My laundry room is a closet off the kitchen. I was in the laundry room in my boxer socks and a tea sorting laundry at the time. I got the feeling that someone had just come in the front door. Milliseconds later, I look at the other side of the kitchen and saw a woman standing there. I screamed crazy loud and she was gone. She wasn't in any crazy old clothes from the Victorian era. Actually, she looked like she was wearing a blue and white 80s shirt and some jeans. I'm mad that I panicked because I couldn't see her face before she was gone. I was mad so I started addressing her. First, I would tell her I needed to sleep tonight and to leave me alone. A few days later, I asked for a sign. Stupid, I know. Well, I have this antique bell thing and after running out for food, I came home and found it rolling across my floor in front of me. There is no way it could have left its location without force. Since then, I see her more and more. I've gone back to ignoring, but it doesn't help. She hasn't done anything malicious or destructive, just is here. I'm kind of stumped on how to handle this and just weirded out. Update, March 12th, 2019. So I did some exploring in this area. Without giving too much away, my complex is long and winding. I've never been to the other side because I don't need to go that way as I'm close to the main road. Well, on the other side of the complex, within a tenth of a mile was a massive high-tension wires, the huge power lines, and a substation below it. On that station is a cell tower. I know nothing about the paranormal besides what I've researched and seen on TV, but could there be some electromagnetism fields or something from there? Not sure, but it was a thought. Also, there is a small brook in the area. On that other side of the complex is a standalone ER. From that area with the power stuff, I can see almost directly into the ambulance bay of an ER. Not sure what it means, but it was an interesting location. There have been no major traumas in the area that I could find, but I spoke to maintenance about the unit and it seems all the tenants leave after a year. Now, we have a decent transient population moving here for work and school, so maybe just a lot of energy left in the place. They said no major complaints or sudden move-outs. I bought Sage on Amazon and that is coming, so I'll let everyone know about that and I am looking for a psychic or medium for a session, but have no idea how to vet someone for this. Any tips would be welcome. The apartment feels quiet today. I've been keeping music on low and some lights on during the darker hours before bed, mainly the hallway light. Also, I only have one window and a huge slider, but I've kept the shades open on both to let some light in. Not sure what it does, but it makes me feel good. Finally, I'd like to say thank you for everyone that's responded. I've I've never gone through something like this or anything even remotely close to it, so thank you for the helpful comments and the occasional joke to lighten the mood. This has been an unnerving ordeal so far, and being pointed in the right path is calming. A 
I lived with my nana for the majority of my childhood. Her house is about 150 years old, give or take. The upstairs consisted of a big room, used as my bedroom. Connected was another bedroom, my parents' room, a bathroom, connected to my room, and an attic door. Like, actually a door. The attic was a room connected to mine. In the attic, there were two secret rooms which I'd never been in. It was just known that they are there. So there's been plenty of paranormal things that have happened at my Nana's house. I'm almost 16 now, and when I was four, I was playing hide-and-seek with my uncle. He was about 11. My uncle's friend and three of my friends, my uncle's friend's sisters. In my room, I had a cot for a bed, so it was able to be folded in half. I chose to hide in it. My uncle came, looked around upstairs, but didn't find me. After a few minutes or so, I heard him yell, forfeit, so I came out. I was about to head downstairs when I heard something behind me. When I turned around, I saw two or three dark figures walking into the closet that my uncle had left it open. A feeling of dread washed over me, and I screamed at the bottom of my lungs and went to run downstairs, but I fell, injuring my arm. My nana and parents came running into the foyer to find me laying at the bottom of the stairs, sobbing. Upon investigation, the closet door was closed. Me and my parents ended up switching rooms, and I'm still deathly afraid of the upstairs at my nana's. Another instance, this is my uncle's story, was when he was around nine. Him and his mom, my nana, were sitting on the couch watching TV when he saw a pure black entity going into him in his mom's room. After that, he flipped out and wouldn't go back in there for months. My aunt was about 18 now, and coming home with her boyfriend, through the window, she saw her mom watching TV. My nana looked at them, and my aunt explains that the look on her face was pure evil. My aunt turned to go inside, and the TV was off and her mom was in bed. It had only been a few seconds and not nearly enough time for an older woman to get to her bed so fast and in pajamas and asleep. The last instance is my own story. It happened two summers ago when I was 13. It was about a week after my birthday and I was going to spend the week with my nana. I was living with my aunt and her family at this point. My uncle was still living with his mom to help take care of her. I hadn't gone into my nana's room yet because I sleep with her when I come over. I had been there a few hours and was going to go to the restroom. Inside my nana's room was the downstairs bathroom connected. The room was dark and as I started feeling an overwhelming sense of fear, I can't exactly remember this moment because I blacked out or something, but I got the rest of the story from my uncle and nana. I stopped at the doorway and stared for a few moments, then released a blood-boiling scream. My nana lunged over, turned on the bedroom light, and I was shaking and crying. My uncle started saying, What's wrong? What happened? My nana begged me to tell her what I saw, and all I mumbled was, The dark man. This is what we referred to the reoccurring dark figure. We sat at the table for hours after that, and noticed that the little pool thing that comes down from the fan was spinning wildly, though the fan was off. I have so many stories from this house and one of the neighbors who has lived next to her her whole life has told us so many stories ranging from a young woman who hung herself there, to people being stabbed, to even a meth head family who would jump out the windows and beat people in there. Being on the fence about believing in the paranormal, I fear these things, but also expect that nothing will happen, especially if I look for them. Dabbling with Ouija boards, walking among headstones late at night, and ghost hunting has probably made things worse for me, but, but it's always felt like stuff has been everywhere that I have been. I have experienced a significant amount of things that have been unexplainable throughout my life, but living in the apartment I live in now has procured a plethora of interesting instances. Only one really stuck with me though because at least for me, it was the most unexplainable thing I've witnessed and really left me confused and wondering. This instance happened a while back in the current apartment that I live in. This is a description of the apartment because this will make things easier to explain. 
The front room connects to the kitchen, and in between the kitchen and front room on a wall is a doorway without a door. This leads to a small hallway going parallel to the kitchen and living room. You can't see anything in the hallway aside from what is on the other side of this doorway because the rest is behind walls. At this hallway, to the right, is my father's room. Next to that is a bathroom, and on the other end of the hallway is my room. There are also a few closets in the hallway, three to be exact. I've been in the front room sitting on the couch late at night watching something on the television. This TV is right next to this hallway entrance and the couch I was sitting on faces directly towards it. This hallway, sometimes when it isn't well lit, is pretty creepy and at times gives me unsettling feelings. Strangely, everyone who has stepped foot in this apartment has felt things and even seen black figures peeking from around the corner, only to disappear back behind the wall a second later. The stove has even been turned on without the flame, gas, with no explanation and one instance, a closet in the hallway had opened loudly and the sound of something large and heavy falling was heard, but nothing had fallen and the door had opened by itself. So as I was watching TV, I saw someone go into my room. At the time, I decided to keep watching TV as it had looked like it was possibly my father going into my room to maybe see where one of our cats were. This person had the same height and everything, but because I had been watching TV, I also wasn't looking directly at them. So in all honesty, I didn't get a good look at who it was, but my father was the only other person here. About ten or so minutes pass and I begin staring at the hallway beginning to wonder why my dad had been in my room for so long. What was he doing? I didn't feel comfortable with him possibly poking around in my room so I decided to get up and go into my room to look. I walk to my room and the first thing I notice is that no one is in my room. I stood there for a second a little uneasy and decided to check my dad's room thinking that perhaps he had walked back without me noticing and was probably up on his computer watching movies or something. But as soon as I reach his room and look in, a sense of dread washes over me because I see him laying fast asleep in his bed. He'd even been asleep for a while and that's why he hadn't been making any noise. For the rest of the night, I now and then glancing over to the hallway from the couch expecting to see something there. I admit it caught me off guard and scared me. I had even been afraid to go back into my room to sleep in fear of something being there that I could not see. At times when I or a friend had seen things in the hallway, especially outside our peripherals, my first thought was that it could have been the TV's light reflecting off of our eyes, strangely or a glare, but this time I don't think it was. I don't know what it was that I saw and I do not know if it was the same thing that me and my friends had seen on occasion in the hallway, but this is one event I won't forget. This was the first time I had seen a full-body apparition. So I have had three separate experiences with the Ouija board that I cannot explain. I've posted this story on a different account on a different page, a throwaway account, and I've forgotten the passwords so I figured I'd post here. The people involved in the story were me and the boyfriend, boyfriend's little sister and her friends, 14 through 16. Anyway, rewind to about 2017, my boyfriend's little sister was having some sort of get-together. Me and my boyfriend showed up to his place around midnight after doing our own thing. His little sis we will call Ray, was playing the Ouija board with a bunch of friends and they were all freaking out. I was bored so I figured I'd join in. As soon as I joined we all started getting phone calls from an anonymous number and the planchette was moving, but I have a hard time believing someone wasn't pushing it. I found the phone calls weird because I didn't know any of these kids so there was no one that could share a phone number with all of these kids and me. I thought about the mom and my boyfriend so... I grabbed their phones and put them in front of me and kept playing. Their phones got calls too. Sometimes it would be one person and other times as many as three of us would get calls at the same time. When we would answer them it would just be static for a few seconds and then it would hang itself up. This continued happening until we finished with the board. 
A few weeks later, I had pretty much forgotten about the incident, and me, my boyfriend, and a few of his friends all decided to take a late night walk, around 2am-ish, to the cemetery near my boyfriend's house. As soon as we entered the cemetery, we started getting the no-caller ID phone calls. All of us. It was strange because no one knew we were going to go to the cemetery, and my boyfriend's friends weren't present when we had done the board. The calls continued until we left. And that was it for the calls until just recently, starting about two weeks ago. Ray had two of her friends over and I was there just waiting for my boyfriend to get out of work, so we all decided to try the board again. We kept getting this Zozo and Mama thing, and the girls would freak out and make us say goodbye every time those names appeared. They said it was a demon or something. I still don't quite believe the planchette moves on its own, but... Anyway, we ended up contacting this heartbroken spirit named Daryl, and we talked to him for a while. He seemed intelligent and knew some things the girls wouldn't know, and that was strange. And this whole time, we were all getting these calls. Even the home phone went off, and no one had that number. We did this a few more times over the spring break, speaking to Daryl each time, and it was whatever, still getting the phone calls each time. But then the calls started happening on their own, all the time. They would happen on my boyfriend's phone at 7am, even though he never played. All of us girls would get them at the same time every day for days. Sometimes one of us would get them non-stop for minutes. We would ignore them and they would just keep coming, just all the time, out of the blue. Especially when two or more of us who had played were in the same room. They were still happening. Paranoid? So here's where the second part becomes relevant. Ever since the second to last time I played the board, I've had really disturbing thoughts right before bed. I can't really explain how it really is, it's like a mini horror movie playing out vividly in my head every time I try to sleep. For instance, have you ever seen those creepy videos where it's a bunch of disturbing little clips put together to some unnerving music, kind of like the video from The Ring, but some have commentary. It's just the strangest thing. I've been having to play music to fall asleep too, so I can sing the lyrics in my head to keep these images out. Any advice on what to do here? I have never been superstitious or believed in ghosts before. I'm not religious so I don't think a cleansing or anything would help. Is there a possibility that there's something wrong with me? I have never seen these images while awake. And the calls I just cannot explain. They're just so strange. I don't even have Ray's number, so I have no idea how someone could have all of these 14-16 to 16 year olds numbers that I have never heard of and mine, my boyfriend's, and their mother's, and the home phone. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r let's read official, and give and receive feedback from the community and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. All links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.